now we can get started. All right, so, hello everyone, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm kind of new to this meetup, so most of you probably haven't seen me before, or have seen me around and haven't really talked to me. Um, and so I'm currently studying computer science at OU, and I kind of, uh, you know, noticed a general theme that uh, for free code camp, and, you know, just around here in general, a lot of people didn't seem to um, finish or either didn't finish computer science in school or are coming from a different field. So I just wanted to give uh, kind of how I got started in web dev, uh, studying computer science in college. So uh, just so you know where I'm coming from, I'll just go a little bit over uh, kind of my, my college history here, uh, kind of what I did before I started coming to the meetups. So I was born and raised in Canada, uh, the land of Canadian geese, and meese, maple syrup, stuff like that. And after I finished high school uh, in 2012, I moved here to Oklahoma to live with my mom, and I thought it'd be nice to um, attend college in the States. So since we live really close to Edmond, I decided to attend uh, UCO, and I started studying, uh, what was it, electrical engineering there. And I did that for my first two semesters, and that was when I had my first programming and uh, computer science experience. Uh, at their engineering computing class, which uh, was a required class for all the engineering uh, disciplines. And they taught that class in C. And so after my two, first two semesters, I decided I wanted to do um, something more related to computers. So I switched to, or transferred to UCO, or OU, uh, which is where I'm now, and studying computer engineering. And here, the computer engineering curriculum is basically the same as computer science for the first uh, two years or so. So I went through all of their, uh, all their Java courses, and I studied abroad for a year uh, in 2015, and I came back last year, uh, September of last year. And that's when I decided I didn't want, really want to work with hardware. I wanted to focus more on computer science, and so now I'm fully computer science major. So I'll probably stick with this one, don't know yet, fingers crossed. So uh, let's go into how I got started in web dev. So I didn't learn any you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript in school. And so my first experience was actually an internship. Um, I got the internship through a, a personal connection through my mom. And um, it was an internship at a company which is somewhat uh, notorious around here, apparently that no one likes, <laughs> uh, Alamode. And if you don't know what um, Alamode or what they do, they sell software for uh, real estate agents, appraisers, mortgage brokers, and they, um, one of their products is basically custom websites for these agents and brokers uh, hosted on their custom CMS system. Um, and so my job as a intern was, uh, their system was running on a legacy Flash system. You know, you had all these fancy animations. Uh, you could add sound effects, things like that. And so they were trying to redis uh, you know, revamp that and use uh, Bootstrap. So what they had in the past was basically this kind of, it might be a little bit hard to see, but it's like basically a rich text editor, right? You could put in text, lists, tables, images, things like that, and it would you know, compile it into HTML. And you know, that works great for, you know, simple text like that and just gets injected into this page that looks like that. You know, your top bar is all, sidebars all loaded in with flash. Um, you could put in, you know, sound effects when you hover over each button. It makes like a laser gun sound. like a pshr, pshr. It's really bad. But uh, anyway, so with simple content like that list and paragraphs, that is pretty easy for it to generate. But once you um, start adding in, you know, old, uh, sorry, let's just start adding in styling to the text, like, you know, bolding, coloring, different layouts, right? You start getting, uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, weird font tags everywhere, empty strong tags and spans. And so if you've ever had the misfortune of working with this kind of HTML, I'm sorry. Uh, but basically they had, a lot of their default content pages were, you know, either laid out with tables or it was laid out, um, or had lots of, you know, font tags laid out everywhere. And so it's basically my job to turn code that looks like that into, you know, just like that, right? The bootstrap 
uh, framework, it already styles all of your default components, right? So you don't need anything there. And so if you have this, it looks consistent on all the sites, and it'll be updated by any you know, site-wide uh, themes that the customer may choose. So I was thinking about demoing some of the things I built. So I worked on this for about two, two weeks. I transferred all of their content pages into clean HTML before I started building some actual template pages that uh, customers could buy. I was going to demo them, but maybe we'll save that for the end if we have time. Um, so how did learning computer science in school uh, you know, actually help me in this internship? I, well, <laughs> I, okay, well, it, it didn't really help directly. It, it, I'll, um, so let me explain, right? So at OU, um, if, you, if you've taken class at OU, you'll, you'll find out really quickly that OU is mostly a Java school, right? Most of their, for, um, yeah, most of their classes, you know, for the better part of your degree, you'll be working with Java for all of your classes. You know, you'll have maybe a few classes here or there that uses something else, but for the most part, it's Java. And I think, you know, that, that while Java's a great language, you know, it's got a robust API, it's got, you know, good type safety, stuff like that, um, the students kind of get locked into thinking, rather than thinking, how can I write this in code, it becomes, how can I write this in Java? And so you get kind of locked into that mentality of how to write software and code. And so um, some of the things that I wish that I knew when I was at the internship, uh, maybe, and just you know, in general that they didn't teach, um, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but uh, essentially they, I would have wished that they taught me how to code better, right? So just general um, learning different languages, right? I was you know, using Java basically the whole time I was there, except for one class, and you know, good programming practices. So things like uh, how to write clean code, how to put in proper comments. Uh, there was, if you follow the Medium, the Free Code Camp Medium blog, there was a post about a week and a half ago called Putting Comments into Code, uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, by a certain Bill Sarer. I'm sorry if I said that name wrong. And basically details how um, it's important to put comments into code, but you should do it in a way that is helpful, and there are things you should and shouldn't do. And so they never really taught us that. They just said, put comments in your code or else we'll take marks off, something like that. So building projects, right? So in a way, when you do your assignments, it's kind of like building a project, but they don't, um, in the end, it's still a class assignment, right? You just want to get it over with. And once, once you've done it, you just kind of toss it off into the side. You know, you don't really want to look at it anymore. And so you're not really encouraged to go back and improve on your projects any further, um, not, and taking the next step. And finally is application of theory. So if you go into the data structures class at OU and you'll ask them, have you built, um, a binary tree data structure before. They'll say, they'll probably say yes, because that was their last assignment in the class, and you know, they have built it. But if you ask them, you know, when would you use a binary tree to store data instead of you know, an array, a stack, linked list, they, they may not really be able to tell you. They may be able to tell you some of the advantages, but not really how or in what situation you would use them. So that was learning um, the, how to code. And another big thing was version control. So Git and GitHub is you know, pretty essential for working in groups and collaborating with others. And, and just for keeping track of your own work and make sure you don't lose your progress. So uh, they don't really teach this in any of, any of the classes. They, um, I asked a friend before the, who took the classes um, a few semesters before, he said that, no, they didn't teach it. But in my human computer interaction class, uh, the professor attempted to explain to us how to use Git. Now I say attempted because I don't think he succeeded. If you walked into that class not knowing how to use Git, you came out still not knowing how to use Git. And you were probably even more confused about what it was from before. And so, yeah, I think that, that would have been um, a nice thing to learn, you know, maybe freshman or sophomore year as you're getting into working on your projects and keeping track of your progress. 
And lastly, you know, relating to version control in GitHub, you know, collaboration. A lot of your assignments, you know, they tell you to do it on your own, right? And so that kind of discourages you from uh, copying from others, cheating, from all the, you know, academic integrity, stuff like that. But when you do that, you're kind of, you don't really get to experience working on a software project as a team. Um, you know, when you just think of work on group projects in school in general, say, okay, you do this, I do that, and we'll just put it all together when we're done. And that doesn't really work all the time with software, especially when you go into a job and you have to work on a team. Um, and the team, you may not always get to meet the team, right? They may be working remotely, uh -huh. things like that. So learning collaboration um, would have been a good thing to know. I believe they teach, um, I believe you have a bit more group work later on in the degree in the last year of study, but uh, not so much in the first three. Now, with that being said, there were things that, um, that did help and I did find useful. And first thing was I got used to coding, right? So when you do all your assignments, you know, you, you code, you, you do your assignments. And so when you get to the job, it doesn't really feel all that, all that foreign. And, you know, it, you, you get used to having, you know, other students and your professors look at your code. And so compared to maybe someone who was always learning on their own, didn't really get a chance to show other people their code, um, I kind of feel like that helped me there. Um, next thing was, I now find learning a new programming language not, you know, not that bad. Um, I said, you know, most of my classes were taught in Java. Uh, the data structures class was taught in C++. And so the professor never really went over much more than, you know, how to assign variables, how to, you know, write a function, just basic syntax and all of the, all of the quirks of the language we were left to, you know, figure out for ourselves, you know, things like pointers, stuff like that. And so the important part was that you understood the fundamentals of programming, right? Like in most languages, you'll have a for loop or a while loop or an if statements. And once you understand that, all you really need to do is go look up the syntax rather than having to figure out how do for loops work in this language because they all work, you know, more or less the same way. And finally, how to search for help, right? Working on uh, assignments really forces you, well, I mean, it doesn't force you, but I had to Google for help a lot, right? I had to go on Stack Overflow a lot and look up, you know, a variety of things. And when I was at my internship, um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I didn't study any HTML before I went to the internship. So web dev wasn't even a thing that I had considered before that. And so I had to look up stuff, you know, every day uh, for the first week or two when I was just learning HTML you know, on the fly. And so I think these are the three things that really helped me while I was there. So I think I've gone on long enough. So just to wrap up, um, learning computer science didn't really directly help me. Um, there were things that kind of, you know, made it easier, but nothing directly helped because, you know, I was working with HTML and CSS, maybe a little bit of JavaScript, and they didn't teach that at school. I mean, why would they? So my main message here is don't worry if you're not a computer science major or if you, you know, stop studying CS. It's not a big deal, especially when you're working in something like front-end web development where it's more about the design and, you know, building pages rather than worrying about how to sort a, sort an array efficiently or how to balance a binary tree, you know. And what's important to remember is just you know, the fundamentals, how to write clean, clean code, how to uh, use version control, how to collaborate with others working on, you know, big projects. And, yep, that's it for me. And, yep, feel free to contact me if you have any questions.